Hello everyone, I am Professor K. N. Vaksore. In this lecture, we are going to study the law of gearing. In the gears, the law of gearing is very important. To have the uniform velocity ratio in the gears, every gear must, must have to satisfy the law of gearing. We will study its statement and its derivation in details. Okay, what is that? What are the condition and what is that law of gearing? The common normal at the point of contact between a pair of teeth must always pass to the pitch point, that pitch point which is the constant point. And the angular velocity ratio between the two gears of a gear set must remain constant throughout the mesh. So just try to understand with the graphical we will just derive the statements. I have just drawn one vertical line. On that line, I have just considered the two points. These are the two centers of rotation of the two gears O1 and O2. This is the one tooth of gear 1. This is the second tooth of this gear 2. These two are inter intersects at common point. That common point is the Q. Next, I have drawn one tangent line. This is called as the common tangent. And through that common tangent, I have just drawn the common normal. This is the common normal. This common normal intersect this line joining the two centers at point P, which is called as the pitch point. That means here you can study, that means the common normal at a at the point of contact between a pair of teeth must always pass to the pitch point. Yes, must always pass through the pitch point. Okay. Next, through this pitch point, I have just drawn one circle whose radius is equal to O1P, which is the radius, P circle radius of the gear 1. I have drawn the second circle whose radius is of O2P, which is the P circle of the gear 2, gear 1 and gear 2. Okay. Next, I will just join this O1Q, that Q is the point of contact. And through that point, I have just drawn one line perpendicular to this O1Q, which is the velocity of point Q, which is on the gear 1. Again, I will again join the O2Q and that I will again draw the perpendicular line which is the velocity of this brown line. This is the velocity of point Q on the gear 2. Okay, I will just draw, I will just close this loop. Now, I will just draw the two perpendiculars O1P, sorry, I will just give the name number again naming o1 m i'll just draw one line perpendicular to, on this common normal again o2 is again perpendicular on this common normal which makes an angle of that common normal sorry this o1 m normal which is which makes the angle of alpha with o1 q and that o1 n which makes the angle of beta with the o2 q just try to understand this this total angle is of beta this total angle is of this total angle is of alpha. We will find the same angles. This angle is again alpha, and this total angle is of beta. We will find these two triangles E, e Q C and second triangle is the E Q D. Just try to understand this this triangle and this okay, sorry. This triangle, this triangle. Okay. Now the velocity of this point is moving on this common normal that point q which is moving on this common normal whose velocity is v now this qc makes an angle of alpha with ec just consider this right angle triangle e q c and again consider second right angle triangle d q e again sorry this point is d okay. This point is D. Okay, we just wait. Okay. Now, velocity of gear 1, which is the V1, this is the V1. Velocity of gear 2 is the V2. Okay. Now, V, just resolve these two components along this horizontal line. V1, V is equal to V1 cos alpha, and V is equal to V2 cos beta. Okay. Again, V is the constant. That's why V1 cos alpha is equal to V2 cos beta. V1 cos alpha is equal to V2 cos beta. Okay.
here to find just consider this triangle v1 is equal, v is equal to v1 cos alpha and just consider the second triangle second triangle v2 is equal to sorry v is equal to v2 cos beta okay now i will just equate these two equations which becomes v1 cos alpha is equal to v2 cos beta okay next as we know v1 v is the velocity of this gear gear 1 and v2 is the velocity of gear 2 now just try to understand that v gear 1 which rotates with the angular velocity of omega 1 and gear 2 which rotates with the angular velocity of omega 2 that's why v1 is equal to o1 q into omega 1 into cos alpha and v2 is equal to and v2 is equal to omega 2 okay omega 2 into this o to q distance v2 is equal to omega 2 and omega 2 is the angular velocity of this gear 2 that's why omega 2 into o to q into the cos beta okay as we know cos alpha just consider this this triangle just consider this triangle just consider this triangle o1 m q this is the right angle triangle that cos alpha is equal to o1 m upon o1 q o1 m upon o1 q and cos beta is equal to o2 n o2 n upon o2 q okay cos alpha and cos beta that way and that values we are going to put in this equation we will find omega 1 is equal to o1 q into o1 m upon o1 q is equal to omega 2 into o2 q into o2 n upon o2 q o2 Q O2 Q gets cancelled, O1 Q O1 Q gets cancelled, you will find O1 M O1 into sorry omega 1 into O1 M is equal to omega 2 into O2 N. Okay, this is the one equation. This is the equation one. Okay, now we will just consider the same equation. Now just consider the second triangle. Which triangle we have to consider? O1 M P. Just consider this triangle O1 M P and O2 N P. O2 and p this triangle o1 n p sorry o1 m p and o2 n p okay if we equate these two if we consider the similar triangle principle o2 n upon o1 m o2 n o2 n upon o1 n o1 m o2 m upon is equal to o2 p o2 p upon o1 p upon o1 p you have to just use this similar triangle principle you have to just consider this triangle o1 n p and sorry o2 n p and the o1 m p with the help of this you will find o2 n upon o1 n o1 m is equal to o2 p upon o1 p okay if we combine these two equation you will find o1 omega 1 upon omega 2 is equal to o2 a O2n upon O1m is equal to O2p upon O1p. Yes. With this, you can find out this ratio, which depends. Just consider this term: omega 1 upon omega 2 is equal to O2p upon O1p. And if you consider this, here you will find there is one common point, which is the p. That means this point, this is the point p. Here you will find that point p. The angular velocity ratio is inversely proportional to the ratio of the distances of of the point P from the centers O1 and O2. This distance, which is which is dependent on this distance, and that distance which is always constant. That's why if that gear gear which satisfies this condition, every time we will find the uniform velocity ratio. That means the common normal. To the two contact surface as the point of contact Q intersects at the line of centers at the point P, which divides the center of distance inversely as the ratio of the angular velocity. Angular velocity that means omega 1 upon omega 2 is equal to O2 P. That means this common normal, this common normal divides this centers line of line joining of these two centers, and that which depends on the ratio of angular velocities this is the law of gearing that means 
what law of getting says that that to have the uniform velocity between the two meeting teeth or two gears that that line of action or this point must always move along the must always move along the common normal only after that that law of getting is satisfied and you will get the uniform velocity ratios okay and the common normal at the pair of the contact between a pair of teeth must always pass through the pitch point this is very important condition this must always pass through the pitch point and the, this is the fundamental condition for the law of gearing this is called as the law of gearing okay i'll just show you okay here we'll find with this i'll just show you one video to you to have the every time we will find that point of contact which always move along this common normal this is the this is the base circle this is the base circle this is the pitch circle and this is again the pitch circle and this black point which is called as the pitch point and that pink point which is the point q which always move along the common normal this is the law of getting if this condition is satisfied every time we will find the uniform velocity ratios Okay, in this way, we have studied the law of gearing. Thank you.